Hello, all. I, uh, I hope you sharpened your pencils because it's time for Muggs' MK Classroom. Professor Muggs is back to continue the Sandbaggers Symposium. And this time we're tackling a new track, 150cc Cheeseland. Let the lecture begin. So, I should start by mentioning that if you haven't watched my 150cc toad circuit bagging tutorial, then you might want to start there. In that video, I introduced the concept of bagging and some of the basic uh, general skills you'll need to sandbag successfully. While some of the same concepts may pop up, I won't be going in depth into things like uh, the basics of how item boxes work, item probability distributions and how they change, etc. So if any of that sounds foreign to you, again, check out my 150cc sandbagging tutorial for Toad Circuit. Many of the skills you gain from that video will be applicable when bagging any track, including here on Cheeseland. That video, by the way, is linked in the description, along with a pretty good table of item probability, so check them out. Now with that out of the way, let's jump right into how to bag on Cheeseland. The first thing to note is that Cheeseland is just a generally more complex course than Toad Circuit is. On Toad Circuit, there were only a few shortcuts we needed to be aware of, but in Cheeseland there are plenty of cuts you can take, and some are huge time savers. Being able to utilize these shortcuts with skilled driving will be vital to making a comeback, so learn these cuts well. In particular, there are seven main off-road cuts that I utilize time and time again when sandbagging Cheeseland, so let me introduce them. Cut number one is pretty obvious. It's the cut under the cheese arch right here. And note that you can plow through the cheese blocks if you're using a mushroom or star, so they aren't much of an obstacle when bagging since you'll often be using such items. Cut two is right after on this next turn. By using a star or mushy, you can cut this turn tight to save a bit of time, and you can still get the double item box if your angle is right. This can be a great way to pass people and make a play at an item box before an opponent steals it. Cut 3 is again right after, although it's pretty minor. You can save a tick of time by cutting a little tight here if you have an item to do so, but in many cases, you'll want to save such speed items for the next cut, which is much more of a time saver. And that cut is cut 4, which is this glider ramp you can easily boost to with a mushroom or star. Then you can glide over the pit to save a nice chunk of time. Uh, the one downfall with this cut is that it does miss the items, so it should only be used in situations in which you can afford to pass those up. Cut 5 is an alternative to cut 4, in which you pick up the double item box ideally and chain a mushroom or star through off-road tight around the pit. This doesn't save as much time, but you get the items, so when bagging, this is sometimes the better play, especially if it's not a lap 3 situation. Cut 6 can be chained with either cuts 4 or 5 if you have the items to do so, and it is another little glider ramp off the side of the main road. This cut will also save a nice bit of time, and chaining cut 4 into cut 6 can be especially useful if you have the items to do so, as we shall soon see. And finally, cut number 7 is actually at the start, and it is just a smaller cut through some offer that saves off some time, but it's especially noteworthy because using your bullet bill here can give you a huge bullet bill extension. Recall that a bullet bill extension zone is any area where, if you use your bullet there, it will tend to take you on an exceptionally long ride. Try to take advantage of this bullet bill uh, extension area anytime you can, because we'll sh very soon see how useful this strategy can be. Keep those seven cuts in mind as we watch some bagging footage here on Cheeseland. Part of bagging here is knowing which cuts to take and when. I'll explain as we watch, but the idea is the following. You want to get the most out of your mushroom, stars, and bullet bills here. Sometimes you have to ignore certain cuts because you need to save your items for the bigger cuts or to get new items. Or sometimes you might be plowing through with a gold and then a star and taking every cut you can. It depends on the context of the race. So with that said, let's jump into the first instructional video. So just like we did on Toad Circuit, I start by bagging at the first item set. The same item rules apply, so if I could pull say triple mushrooms and a star, then I'm off to about as good a start as I can hope for. But on Cheeseland, you really don't have to be too picky early on. I settle for a single mushroom and uh, triple mushrooms. <laughs> There's plenty of time to cycle items, so I'm not worried about it. And with all those cuts I mentioned, catching up here is relatively easy. I take my time and try to get to 10 coins before lap 1 ends, and I cycle out my items at the next double. 
I'm not driving great, by the way, but it's of no consequence. I'm bagging. The boo I got steals triple greens, which I don't want. I'm going to chain my star and greens into the double to get something new. And I should get something good because I'm in ninth place and I'm far from first based on the minimap. Also note, I passed up the glider cut and took cut five because I needed better items. And it pays off with a golden and a bullet bill. Now we have to recall cut number seven, which as I said, can give you an awesome bullet bill extension. Getting a bill and using this extension is one of the best strategies to bagging Cheeseland. So if you get one, then try your best to hold it until the extension if possible. This will be my goal, but being as I have a golden in front of it, I'll need to wait a whole lap. This does put me at risk of getting shocked, but I'm willing to roll those dice because the extension is literally that good. I get shelled and decide to use the golden and take some cuts. At this point, I'm trying to get around to cut seven again just as fast as possible before my bill gets either stolen by Boo or lost to a shock. On this journey, I also pull triples in my backup slot, which is perfect. I can use the bullet bill extension, then finish the track off by taking the two glider cuts, cuts number four and number six, to steal first. Also, note how far ahead the Mario is on the minimap. This is a good thing because it means I probably won't overtake them while in the bullet state. If you pass too many people or are in first during the extension, it won't work. Uh, recall that I mentioned this in my Toad Circuit video. Fortunately, I should be good here. I make it to cut number seven and then use the extension. Now the best case scenario is also a shock. The bullet bill extension is so long that a shock dodge isn't too uncommon during it, although it does take some luck. But, ha, go figure, I get the shock dodge right in the middle of the bill. At this point, victory is almost certain barring any major flubs. No blue shell is coming, so I use one mushroom early, then take cuts four and six, and bam. Not only did I pull off the first, but it was a relatively comfortable lead at the end. This was the perfect outcome when bagging Cheeseland. On lap three, I took the bullet extension and got a shock dodge during it, while having triple mushies behind it, although a golden or a star would have sufficed. Hopefully that last race proved to you how good that bullet bill extension area is, but if it didn't, I have another video. Roll the tape. Again, I bag at the start. I pull off into the dirt to kill some time and let the runners pull ahead. Then I drive down the line of items. I get a mushroom and a star, which is totally fine for now. And now I focus on getting 10 coins. I don't do great at getting them, but I do well enough. I also get rid of the mushroom at the next item set with the knowledge that I am almost guaranteed to get something better. I get triples, which is again good enough for now. At the next set, I change out the star, again thinking I'll get something just as good or better. And I take cut 5, but avoid taking the glider cut 6 at the end because I don't want to catch up too much before the next items. A blue shell replaced my star and I don't want it, so I need to make sure I get something better. So I hold off in 8th place to manipulate the items a bit in my favor and chain my triples into the items. This causes me to get stuck in dirt on a bad line actually, uh, so I had to burn the blue shell and the triples. Uh, I don't recover for a bit, and when I do, I only have one mushroom from the triples left. Now, though, a big moment occurs. I notice a bullet bill behind me. And the odds are they have taken the extension, which means it won't drop them off until the glider ramp after cut number three. This also means the bullet will be passing through the item set, and I cannot afford to miss the double item box. So I take advantage of cut number two by using my last mushroom in order to cut off the bullet bill and get the double box first. If I don't do this, the bullet may either hit me or take the double from me, and that would be a killer but the risk pays off. I get the double box just in time to avoid taking a hit by the bill. Not only that, but I get a star then a bullet bill myself. Note that if I didn't nab the double, I might have just gotten the star. Uh, so needless to say, cutting off that bullet was a huge play. Now, Wadio is feeling good. I can use the star soon, then take the bullet bill extension right after. The only thing that could ruin me is a sudden shock, but fortunately, it doesn't come, even though I got shelled. I don't take both gliders, by the way. 
I do this to get a new item after using the star. Again, this should be a good item, hopefully a speed item, which I can use once the bullet ends to take the final two glider cuts on the third lap, number four and number six. Winner, winner, I got another star. I make it safely to the extension area, then use my bullet, just like in the last race I showed. I enjoy the ride during the extension, but I actually make a miscalculation. Looking at the minimap, I thought the golden metal Mario is in first, but they're actually in last a lap behind. Not realizing this until it's too late, I used my star right after the bullet ends. <laughs> Why, you may ask? Uh, because I thought my only hope at winning would be a shock dodge, since I thought first was way ahead. But I soon realized I am actually right on top of first. But using a star right after the extension area usually gives you just enough juice to make cut number four. I do indeed make it to that glider, and I eke out of first place, once again thanks to bagging. Now obviously this one didn't need to be so close, if I used my star later I could have taken both glider cuts at the end, but again, this was because I lost track of who was in first. But fortunately for me, Wadio always wins. Also, notice the similarities between the two I have shown so far. I got to 10 coins early. I was strategic in terms of which cuts to use and when. And of course, that awesome bullet bill extension came in huge in both races, and both times I had a speed item behind the bullet to take advantage of the ending shortcuts. Even though in the second race uh, I didn't need a shock dodge, uh, getting one is obviously ideal, but like I said, <laughs> you don't need one. The extension in the second race was good enough on its own. Now, you may be wondering, do I need to use the bullet bill extension to bag successfully on Cheeseland? Well, the answer to that is a resounding no. While that extension may be the uh, optimal and ideal outcome when bagging, especially paired with a shock dodge, sometimes you won't even get a bullet. So let's take a look at one more race, but this time it'll be a bullet bill-less bag. So, I start my bagging as usual. After some putzing around, I get triple mushrooms and a star. Perfect. Then, as before, I try to get to 10 coins ASAP. With only 8 people in the race as well, uh, it should be noted that the item probabilities will also be slightly different, and with a star and triples, I don't feel like I need new items yet. I get my 10 coins, but then hit a stupid banana. Oh well, I'm bagging. I use a mushy to recover, and then cycle out my items at the next set to get two new ones. I take cut 5 with my star body, but I kinda want to remain in 8th place when I get my next item. So, I toss the blue shell and get something new while in 8th. Alright, it may not be a bullet, but I do pull a shock. I take cut 1 with my golden, but I'm closely watching the mini-map. I notice that if I take cut 2 tight through the off-road, I'll pass through the items before my golden runs out. So, I actually take the turn extra wide to burn the golden and get a new item. I don't want to get stuck with only a shock in my hand. And if I did take the cut, I would catch up enough that I would be in a position and distance from first that I doubt I would get good speed items at the next item set. In fact, I decided to go all out and actually re-bag here. I wait for the toad behind me to pass, then chain my shock when they do into the items to get a fresh one. But I also made sure nobody would get a shock dodge by checking the minimap. Now, I was hoping for another bullet uh, so I could cap this runoff like the last two, but I got a crazy 8. I will have to make do with it. Fortunately, I know the toad behind me is neutralized from the shock, so that's no worry, and while everyone else is small from the lightning, I can gain some ground. Then, because I'm pretty far behind uh, from first based on the minimap, I decide I need to take the two glider cuts number 4 and number 6 to shave some time. And I actually get lucky on the second glider. When my golden runs out, my crazy 8 orbits me, and the bomb almost hits the cheese blocks, which would have exploded me. Somehow, though, my red shell makes first contact, which destroys both the cheese block and the red shell. I spam the rest of the crazy 8, uh, mostly just to get to the star and, and waste the rest, and then I pick up a new item and drive as fast as I can. I luckily pull triple mushrooms, which means I can take cuts 1 and 2 if I so choose. I do just that and quickly find myself right in the front of the pack. Now, I need to be careful not to hit the banana first place has, so I keep a bit of distance. But now it's decision time. Do I take cut 4, 5, or 6? Well, here, honestly, any of them probably would have worked, but I was aiming for cut 6. My reasoning was this. If I take cut 4, I'll be stuck with a horn, and first place might be able to get 
uh, second place items and use them on me. That leaves cuts five and six, and six is a better time saver, so I chose to go with that one. However, ink hits me just before the items, and I hate ink. It throws off your lines uh, by making the track slippery, and I'm worried that uh, without being able to see totally, I'll hit first place as banana. So I change plans suddenly and take cut number five. This will get rid of the ink and put me just ahead. But the good news is that first place will be stuck with their banana and whatever item they have in the backup slot. And since I have a horn, I think only a banana snipe can really get me here. I don't get sniped, and I finish just before the people taking the glider cuts do. Another win. Note how different that race was than the other two. Not only did I not get a bullet bill and thus no extension, but I rebagged midway through the race. This was in hopes of getting a bullet while far behind and in last, but it didn't happen. But still, I was able to utilize the shock and the items I did get to sneak out a win thanks to speed items and careful shortcut usage. In fact, just in general, note how much ground I was able to make up on this map even without the bullet bill extension. This is why Cheeseland is a great map for bagging. All those built-in shortcuts and off-road you can drive through with speed items really makes this map come back friendly. Anyways, uh, those are the three races I wanted to show. Hopefully, walking you through all those races was at least somewhat helpful. Now, it's up to you to get out there and practice bagging Cheeseland. So go cheese it up! Keep in mind everything you learned in this video, and I am 100% certain that you can also become a sneaky sandbagger, a comeback king, and the true champion of Cheeseland. So with that, everyone out there take care, and bye bye